Well, so I began by thinking um, about how to exactly <clears throat> talk through one of these things that would make it vaguely interesting for people. And I came up with the idea of talking about something I'm writing, but um, talking through how I'm writing it and, and what I'm doing with that as well. And um, and, um, and and hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully people will find that interesting. OK, so the article I chose for my experimental, <laughs> my experimental, whatever this is, my first day flicks special i just finished writing a piece about helicopter money and so i thought i'd use that as the example so here we go i was asked um by a magazine that i write for to to write an article about helicopter money and the relationship between helicopter money and digital currency and you know this is a this is a magazine i get paid to write for so i you know it's a, i want to make sure the article comes out really well and uh, i want to do a good job on it but my you know golden rule of writing is that you never write just for one thing so if you're asked to write something you start thinking about how you can use it in other ways and how you can <clears throat> kind of you know leverage it so I said, yes, of course, I'm going to write it. And I started by thinking, OK, well, what is helicopter money? That's a good place to start. Um, then looking at whether digital currency could be used to deliver. I mean, I'm pretty sure it could, uh, but obviously need to double check on that. And then look to see if digital money could play some kind of role in coming you know overcoming the the crisis or helping us out of the crisis by dealing with stimulants payments i think you know for, for most of us you know people watching this in the uk and the us the answer is probably not in fact the answer is certainly not um but that doesn't mean we might not want to think about it and put things in place for the next crisis in other parts of the world um, actually, that question is a little different because in other parts of the world, you already do have, you know, some forms of, of digital money and, and mobile wallets and so on. OK, so how did I go about writing this and deciding what to think and deciding what to do, say? So the first thing I did was just go back to basis, ask myself, what is it? The helicopter money, that is. And when I ask a question like this, I ask it in two ways, because the first thing I ask myself is, well, what is it? Do I understand it? And the second thing I ask myself is, well, what have I said about it? Because I don't want to look like an idiot and, um, you know, find out that something I said was wrong or I'm going to say something that contradicts. And I remembered something about helicopter money. I know I had mentioned it in uh, Before Babylon Beyond Bitcoin my book about the history and future of money. So I quickly um, looked inside the book, uh, not physically, of course. I, I mean, I just opened it up on my laptop, did a quick search for helicopter money. And sure enough, in a section about why central banks might be interested in digital money, I noted uh, I'd written this paragraph that, um, you know, it, uh, it digital money um, adds to the sort of toolkit available to central bankers and one of the things it gives them is the ability to provide helicopter money and I also thought at that point that I sort of remembered this was something to do with Milton Friedman so I just quickly checked it and sure enough it's uh, back in the 60s it was Milton Friedman who originated the term it actually sparked something else off in my mind because I think about helicopter money I always think I don't always think but it does sort of put me in mind of two people. It puts me in mind of Milton Friedman, but it also puts me in mind of Adolf Hitler because of Hitler's plan, the very the famous Operation Bernhard, um, the Nazi plan to destroy the British economy in the Second World War by uh, dropping money out of aeroplanes. The idea was they would create forged um, British currency, forged five pound notes, 
and then they would literally drop these out of planes and people would pick them up and spend them and the ensuing hyperinflation remember i mean that that generation of people in germany had vivid memories of the catastrophe of hyperinflation that hyperinflation would devastate the british economy it never actually happened because the the the, the war finished before the plan was put into operation but even then i'm skeptical about whether it might have worked i mean given that um Hitler's plan I, th I can't remember off the top of my head I think the plan was to drop about five billion in currency in today's prices on the country and in the last bout of QE uh, the Bank of England I think printed I don't know what is it 350 billion and put it into the economy without causing hyperinflation so anyway I don't know I mean maybe that would be an interesting subject for for another another talk and Operation Bernhard let's just put a marker on that and see if anyone is interested in it anyway um, so then I thought, OK, now what have I read recently about it? Because I remember I'd read a couple of interesting things recently and I remembered one of them was from Francis Coppola. And so I went over to her blog to have a look at a couple of things, at which point I remembered that um, I didn't remember. I went to her blog and discovered, I think I did know this, but I'd forgotten that um, she'd published a book about it. And I, And when I saw it, I remembered because... Francis and I bumped into each other at a thing to do with Libra. It was some, some sort of media breakfast. I can't remember exactly. Um, but um, but anyway, so um, and then I thought, well, oh, Francis knows all about this and she's written a book about it. So I'll go and have a look at her book. Luckily, it was available on Kindle. So I bought it on Kindle and um, and it was a good it was a good easy read. I had a cup of tea and um, started working through it. And very quickly picked up the, the, the stuff I need. So um, so her, I mean, I, I won't go into it. You need to read the book. But the point is, QE and helicopter money are different things. But the kind of QE that she's talking about would involve the use of helicopter money. So in a future crisis, could we use helicopter money? Yes, we could. And here are some ways to do it. I mean, you need to read the article to see what I actually said about it. But it doesn't matter. So I'd got the two things I need. I'd got what I said about it and I'd got what other people said about it. And the two things seemed to agree. And I'd learned some new things that I needed to learn about it to formulate some ideas. So then I started to think, OK, um, well, if I'm going to think about how stimulus might work in the future, I need to think about how it's working now. I did a little bit of research. I had a couple of things in my little uh, library of clippings which I'll talk about in the future. And I read those and that led me to some stuff in Asia about um, stimulating people into using mobile wallets. Again, I don't want to go into it here, but I, I do talk about it in the article. And then I thought, um, no, I need to focus it back more on sort of UK and US, what's going on in Europe. So um, I had to look at a couple of European examples. And of course, the same thing is stimulus in a place where you know who everybody is and they've all got bank accounts. So, you know, Denmark, for example, um, not so complicated um, in other parts of the world, incredibly complicated. So and the, and the crucial point about this isn't just that everybody's got a bank account, but it's everybody's got a bank ID. And I'll, I'll come back to this a bit later on. So Europe, it's OK. I mean, UK is, you know, there's a lot of people in the UK that don't have bank accounts. So the UK is, um, you know, a different, uh, you know, a different situation there. Uh, anyway, um, so um, let's go on. So then I looked at the US and of course the US is really kind of unusual because in the US, you know, the, the Treasury was actually printing checks and, and posting them out, which, of course, seems odd to people from overseas that the US has such a, in, in many ways, such an underdeveloped financial infrastructure. Um, and, and millions of people were relying on these checks. And then, of course, they have to go to take them to check cashers and blah, blah, blah. It all seems very inefficient. And um, oh, I don't want to talk about it right now, but but that's the point. And then, of course, um, I couldn't help noticing, because I've been writing about this as well, that in you know round about the same week that the U.S. Treasury, in fact, exactly the same week, the U.S. Treasury began mailing out physical paper checks to people for stimulus. China started the beta test of its digital currency in four big cities, and 
I don't know what that means, but you know, it must mean something. Um, these two events happening at the same time. So, so now I know kind of what hell got to money is. Does it make sense in stimulus? Yes, it does. How could you do it? Well, you need to get money into bank accounts or you know some other payment accounts, mobile money accounts, and so on. And the advantage of digital currency, of course, is that the central bank can can create the digital currency and then either through the commercial banks um, or quite separately, and that's a different topic, um, drive the money directly into people's pockets. So that's good. Uh, so then I was left uh, finishing up thinking, OK, well, so but, you know, would it actually work? Could it actually work in the next crisis? And in my new book, um, The Currency Cold War, I'd noticed and 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 I, I've actually I don't, this is an extract from the book. I'd noticed that in the U.S. stimulus bills from a little while ago, um, discussion of a digital dollar, a digital currency had actually started to crop up. And although it, it didn't make it through either of these bills, that sort of suggests to me that it could in the future. So then I started to think, well, actually, this could be a, a great thing for post Brexit Britain. It could be, um, you know, I mean, why, why, why can't a digital sterling be one of the most important digital currencies in the world that people would choose for its stability and probity and all that sort of thing? So, uh, so I finished off with a couple of thoughts about that. So now I have my article. So what's the point of what I've been saying? So, <clears throat> so I put together the magazine article about helicopter money and digital currency which came out pretty well I mean you'll have to read it uh, when it comes out in financial world to see what you think about it um, and I think that that's about 1200 words I think um, but of course when I was putting that together I'd cut in some other bits and pieces that I had on file or from the things I was reading so I actually ended up with about 2000 words in notes which I quite often I quite often do this. So I reorganize them as a blog post. I just find that's an easy way to store the thoughts. And it means that at some point in the future, if the topic of helicopter money comes up in the press, if I'm asked to comment on it or if I decide to write a blog post or if a client asks me to write a blog post about it, I've got enough material there. So from that 2000 words, I can pull, you know, 500 words or so. Well, probably not even that because you've, you've got the, the new topic as well. But actually, after I'd finished um, looking at France's book and putting my notes together, I thought, actually, it's quite an interesting topic. And I looked up a couple more things about government stimulus, um, actually from a couple of books I had I had around on my bookshelf. I have, I have a million books about this sort of stuff. And then I jotted down a few more notes and that that gives me so you know i can't I, I have to go back and check it but i think it's about two and a half thousand words of notes in total which is half a book chapter and because i'm thinking of writing a book about how to you know rebuild the financial services sector or at least how to rebuild you know the banking sector using some of the counterintuitive stuff that exists because of new technology this is the sort of glass bank stuff that I like talking about. I've sort of filed that away because I might use that. And I also picked up, you know, some interesting quotes, um, some facts, anecdotes that from a couple of things I read about this. And actually, I've already cut a couple of those into into some presentations I was working on for various bits and pieces. In, in particular, I was reading the American banker stuff about um, about how, you know, America's financial infrastructure really does need a bit of a refresh and that happened to feed into a couple of other things that I was working on um, and it also gave me an idea for a for a client for a workshop that um, that uh, you know clients might be interested in around this sort of thing so uh, yes so I ended up with a great article but I ended up with some other stuff as well and um, and I'll finish as always of course with a plug for the new book and you can read all about it at the currency Cold war Dot com and and you can read all my other stuff at www.tgwbirch.com so um thanks for listening <laughs>